Hi guys, this is Amnal and we are continuing our Gwent tutorial series. This time around we are going to take a look at Northern Realms starter deck. As you can see, this deck uses Foltest, uh, who is basically a 4 strength gold and when you deploy him, uh, he boosts all units in your hand and in your deck by one. As we can imagine, that means that he's the very first card you want to play in every single game. So, well, with that out of the way, let's take a look at our bronzes. Uh, well, this deck as a whole focuses on a very new concept in Gwent, which, well, came out as of yesterday, which is armor. Uh, you will notice that quite a lot of units have information armor and the number. Let's just start with a 3 dumb infantryman. Well, it's, it's just a 8 strength unit, but uh, uh, he has 3 armor. What armor means is, well, pretty self-explanatory. Whenever this unit is being damaged, uh, armor goes first. So uh, if you hit him by 4, you won't go from 8 to 4, but from 8 to 7, since 3 of those will be uh, taken by armor that is going to be destroyed. Uh, so, well, that's a decent-ish card in this deck, but nothing to write home about. Probably will be one of the first uh, to get an axe uh, as soon as you uh, get a bit more. Uh, another one uh, is Redian Elite. Uh, they also have free armor, but uh, free less strength. However, if this unit uh, armor, unit's armor reaches zero, boosts cell by five. So, if it's uh, if it gets damaged or otherwise loses armor, he will become a ten. So, uh, and I imagine it uh, can go, uh, it can work a few times. I've actually never tested it because, well, it came out yesterday and I haven't played this deck yet. But uh, if you manage to uh, give him some armor, he loses it again, it uh, very well uh, may result in him boosting himself a uh, few more times. Um, and one of the more interesting cards, Redian Knight Elect. Uh, it's, it's a bit confusing for older players because that was a, a, that used to be a, an illustration for a special card called Promote. So it kind of looks weird as a unit, but... Uh, here we are. Uh, once again, 5 strength and has 2 armor. At the start of the turn, if he is armored, so uh, a bit like the opposite of this guy, he boosts adjacent units by 1. So as long as uh, you have him in the middle of your units and, uh, and no one takes care of his armor, he's going to uh, continue uh, boosting uh, your own troops, which has great potential if enemy has limited uh, capabilities of uh, removal or well, damage. Uh, now we go down here uh, to Dunbanner Heavy Cavalry and uh, this is a way of well, dealing with enemy's armor or uh, turning your own armor into uh, into actual power, actual strength. So when we deploy him we, uh, we remove armor from two units and boost him by the amount of the armor we removed. So, well, in case of those, so for example, we have those two guys, uh, we deploy him, take three armor from each, uh, make him an eight, and they will boost by uh, uh, each of the, well, every one of those will boost himself by five. And uh, here we have, well, another interaction with armor. Uh, this is uh, reinforced trebuchet. Hasn't really been changed on that all that much since it was beta. It used to be six and uh, do exactly the same except the armor bit. Uh, that damage will ignore armor, as, as you can see here. That, well, since there was no armor in the game, it was not there. But, well, if you can uh, lob 90 kilogram projectiles, uh, for a length of 300 meters, it sure, well, it surely should ignore armor. Uh, and last but not least, river scouts. Uh, you deploy them, and uh, you choose a bronze card on your uh, on your board. That can be a river scout, I believe. Uh, well, it used to be possible. I'm not sure if, the, if this wording it is a different bronze ally. Well, we shall see as well. Either way, uh, it's it's very similar to Navigator, in 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 this way that uh, he would uh, well, he, um, but in this case he of course works for all bronze units, not just a specific uh, 
specific keyword ones, specific tribal ones, uh, like uh, wild hunt in that other case. So we summon a copy, which really means we uh, take it out of the deck and uh, put it uh, into play. Um, as for uh, special cards, we have very few, which uh, will come back in a sec. But we, we have Alzer Thunder, which is a 7, 7 damage. We have a good old uh, first light that, well, it clears the weather or uh, sun summons a random unit from the deck. Or we have Thunderbolt Potion, which is a, a buff. Uh, it's a st stepsister of Swallow Potion that we've seen so far. It boosts three adjacent units by four, which uh, well, you can easily adapt amounts to 12 rather than 8 and it is spread out but well you need to have three boostable which is non-gold uh, units on your side of the board so a little bit of a cash but yeah, a very useful card as for silvers uh, let's go to Sheila de Tansonville the Tansonville I'm sorry Sheila de Tansonville uh, so this is where the fact that we only have three bronze special cards gets kind of weird because uh, what she does is when you deploy her, uh, you play a bronze special card from your hand and then draw a card. So that basically allows you to, you know, speed things up a little bit and, uh, for example, deploy her and uh, drop a drop an Alzheimer Standard, uh, which amounts to to thirteen strength for a swing. And uh, yeah, it's a good stuff. And then you of course replace that card. Uh, so you are not losing your card, uh, your card advantage. Uh, decent card, but it's it's kind of weird in this starter deck with so very few uh, special cards. We'll see how that goes. And of course, rest of the silvers are the, the standard ones that we have with all the other decks. So uh, cleaver locks, do the copies and uh, any uh, copies power from the enemy uh, matches his his uh, current power. Deploy allows us to, you know, uh, take the card, um, uh, bounce a card from our uh, from our deck, uh, uh, from our board into our hand, play it again outright, and strengthen it by three. Uh, what can it? It can be useful for, well, I guess, Redanian Knight elects uh, because they want to have armor. Not so much for Redanian elites because we. That we want them to, uh, if, if we were to balance them with, with decoy, that would of, of course remove the boost. Same goes for Dunbanner Heavy Cavalry Man, but well, it, uh, it can be used offensively uh, in some cases, I guess. Uh, since, uh, for example, if you want to remove armor from, from the enemy. And yeah, but, uh, and of course, it's, it's very usable for reverse scouts for, for obvious reasons and to lesser extent uh, to Sheila the Tanserville. But well, as we mentioned, our options here are fairly limited. So, uh, and so yeah, no, nothing to write home about uh, here. And of course, we have Scorch and Commander's Horn. As for golds, uh, good old Geralt, good old Triss, and uh, Royal Decree uh, that allows us to, to, to play one of the other gold cards from our deck. And uh, our um, faction gold card is Philippa Eilhart, which is a well, entirely new card, but a very interesting one. She basically sends uh, a chain lightning. Uh, first enemy is hit for, for 5, second for 4, 3, 2, and 1. Uh, but uh, same enemy cannot be damaged twice in a row. That means that if you have, if they have only one enemy that can be damaged, he will be damaged uh, only by five, and the rest of uh, Lightning Bolt uh, will go away. But if uh, there are two enemies to be hit, well, it will uh, continue bouncing between them. So uh, it will be five, three, one, uh, amounting to nine uh, for the first guy, and four and two for the second guy, which amounts to six, and uh, in that case, uh, that's what, a 16-point swing, which is quite a lot. Uh, suddenly not, not much of, of a body on her, but I think it's, 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 a, it's a very decent card. Let's see the action though. Once again, we are going to uh, play good old challenges. Northern Realms and Stillskin, so we will, um, I imagine, end up playing against. Uh, oh well, we are playing against Radovid, uh, who, um, well, when he spawns himself on board, he locks two enemies and damages them by four. 
which is annoying for our knight elects. But well, here we are. But not much else, really. It is how I punish those who irritate me. Onward! Attack! Hmm, right. What do we have here? Um, basically, like this. Uh, well, since, since his deck is going to be focused on armor, I'd imagine. And Dudu is a bit of a dead card most of the time, I'm afraid. Uh, not terribly. Mm, okay, let's replace Dudu and get a reverse card, I guess. Uh, we'll keep another standard and... Uh, yeah, I think we'll keep Scorch. I mean, the whole idea of having both Duda and Scorch at deck is... Uh, just escapes me. What's... Uh, either one or the other will be pretty bad. I'm not a big fan of that, but that, that's a good starting card. So, uh, let... I think we are going to keep it. Um, problem is that if... Uh, let's see... We want to make use of Redanian Knight Elect, but... Uh, we don't really have that much in terms of, you know, in terms of having more than uh, enough things on one row. So those are on the on the siege. Those are on um, on ranged. But well, I guess we'll, we'll we can try going ranged. Oh, well, let's see. Okay, I, I'm going to keep this one. Seems decent enough. Hmm. Okay, we're going first. Let's your orders. put a big body on the board. All right. So uh, this, when deployed, uh, adds two strength to adjacent units, which there are none. And fresh coup means that if it is put next to a, a card with a keyword crewman, it will fire this, which is boosts itself by three for for each of the crewman points. Um. Let's try that. Okay, so they ignore armor as well. Yeah, annoying stuff. So, uh, so uh, actually, it's like uh, so we have an armored focus deck, but it uh, turns out to be more, you know, around uh, ironclad infantry. Well, our enemy is uh, seems to be focusing on uh, machines, which is well a different archetype. Hmm. What do I want of it? Uh, it's a bit awkward. Uh, the thing is that it, we want to have like three units in a row with uh, Redanian Knight Elect in the middle, and uh, perhaps then use Thunderbolt, but. Uh, there are no good ways to go about. Okay, you know what? I'm going to deploy you, so, you and bring one of those. And we are going to deploy him right here. All right, so he just passed. I guess. Uh, well, it's it's it is uh, a bit of a so. This is something you would be hard pressed to find in a real game that, uh, well, after just a few low tempo cards, someone passes, but that's how AI seems to, seems to play. So if you want to keep, keep getting cards out of them, if you have uh, consistent effects on board, you kind of need to, to, to tiptoe around them and, uh, uh, like pretend that you are within its reach from what I've seen from playing, uh, like what now? 12 those challenges. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of probably an overkill in uh, in strategy. All right. Um, uh, once again, I think we'll get rid of Dudu. Mm -hmm. Oh, holy oh, shit! Yes, right. Uh, not used to it. <laughs> oh, man, that's. Someone was screaming at the top of their lungs. Wow. Okay. Well, that was... <laughs> wow, I can't believe I did that. 
Well, here we just wanted to take Kat out of him. But, uh, as I mentioned at the very start of this recording, what you always want to do in this particular case is to deploy a bloody Foltest at the start of your game. Unbelievable. Mm. Okay, so here we kind of want to. Well, we already played one of our night elects, so a uh, reverse scout would be useless. Uh, so, uh, because, well, we have both of those, so we're going to replace this one. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to start, I think, by deploying Night Elect. Um, Redania Elite, I'm sorry. Okay, so we'll have time to, to scorch it if, if they continue buffing it. Uh, I'm going to get the next one. Well, actually, I should have... Uh, Alright, what I should have done actually was uh, put this guy uh, next, to, next to him because he would already start uh, buffing them. So, there we go. Awaiting your orders. Mm. Alright, and now we are in a position to strip armor from those two guys and uh, that will buff them, but we don't want to do it quite yet because that would, uh, in one more turn, uh, put them at 12, which we don't want. Uh, let's see. I think we are going to... Alright, we are losing by by enough, so uh, Geralt is an option, so let's go for it. Mm-hmm. Well, in this case, I'm almost thinking about getting uh, armor out of them, but eh, not quite. Um, well, uh, but... Okay, so, so that was a bit of a, mis uh, of a misplay, because what I could have done was play Sheila the Tassel use her to play Arsenal Standard on this, bi this big boy, and then, uh, for this round only, I would have uh, had a chance of scorching those two. But, of course, I didn't know that uh, he would play another one. And uh, playing Geralt there was also obviously a, a solid. Oh, oh, bloody hell! Okay, I forgot about it twice. So my my defense is, I woke up uh, an hour ago and I haven't had my coffee yet. So yeah, that's uh, that, that's what I'm sticking with. But wow, that's. A... <laughs> uh. Right, I think we need to scorch. Um, okay, the thing is that if he uh, plays himself and locks one of our uh, those, one of those guys, uh, that uh, plus five boost will not fire. So uh, yes, let's, let's scorch. Do not ah, test too late. Patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't want to put Alza Thunder on them because that's free wasted. Uh, so that would uh, just be four damage rather than six damage right here, since we don't have an op an option. Uh, well, but that's uh, actually well. Now that uh, we don't have armor on them anyway. I'm for that battle. Might as well take it from them. Okay, let's play Sheila and. Interesting. How's that standard with her? Let's get this over with. Okay, I believe that since it doesn't say may or you can choose or whatever on those lines, that means that if there are only two units with armor, which is this one and this one, we would be forced to also remove this armor here. So. For that reason, we are going to wait one more turn uh, and play the Nebrot portion first. Please don't have scores. 
Right, and I'm itching for that battle. Yeah, as you can see, we cannot ignore it. Uh, we cannot click it off, so we would have to take that armor, and that would have disabled his ability to boost. Alright, so that was pretty straightforward. So yeah, the, the, those guys may be problematic, those don't banner heavy cavalry in your deck. Uh, I wouldn't put more than one, perhaps two in. Like putting three would be would be madness, because more often than not you would find yourself in a situation where uh, either they won't uh, have nearly enough uh, uh, payoff, because well, since more often than not you will be playing uh, decks that don't have enough uh, in terms of armor, or don't have armor at all, you will find yourself uh, basically playing them for like 2 to 5 strength, or uh, as in what we've seen, wasting the, uh, the ability. If you are forced to play it. If you are forced to play it before. Close ranks. Before the end of the turn. Mm hmm. So once again, we have Sheila. Uh, this is one like once again, Rad Dove. It's unlikely he will have any weather. Uh, we'll keep the royal decree. I like both trebuchets, and I like Redanian Knight and Redanian Elite. Uh, Okay, let's try to fish for something else. Uh, and I think we'll remove Sheila for that to that end. Yeah, I'm liking I'm liking this uh, this a bit more. Um, as for hmm, I don't think we want uh, I don't think we want one more river scout since uh, well, Dico is is better in this situation than a, than another river scout. So let's do it this way. Hmm. All right. Um, well, first of all, let's play the bloody poltest. Crush those vermin. Yeah, remember, uh, kids. Don't look silly on the internet. Hmm. Oh well. Start with a redundant detail imagine. See if they have something to too old for this shit. Hit, not really. But then I am Knight Elect. That would start that will stagger them. Now we are going to play shit peddlers. Second one. Troops, now. We don't have Dune Banner heavy cavalry, but oh well. Seems solid enough, and uh, well, once again, it's it's a perfect uh, spot to play Geralt. Any last words? We are kind of. Oh. oh well, it's still working fine. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's a bit late, but I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, so this is basically worth one point. Uh, Every ten, and well, here we played three cards that are worth two points every ten, so uh, it's less than ideal. Actually, we played four cards, but yeah, that's uh, but uh, three turns really. So now, when I think about it, I should have actually started with the trebuchet. I will not let this become a second side. Hmm. So we could decoy it to, to, to save it on an off chance that they have something to ping it for one wave, but yeah. All right. Hmm. Don't really have <laughs> uh actually yes, let's do it. So Dika is, is a bit problematic here because we lose that, that boost from Fall Test, um, if you remember. 
But we're Do broke it. as shit peddlers. Best give up now. We can do that. But Maria. Hmm. Okay, so this is uh, Tamerian Infantryman. Uh, when you deploy him, he summons all copies of that unit. Uh, which, uh, well, it is. So it's similar to, to Eskel, uh, Lambert and Vesemir, which would suggest that he, his last two cards, if it is a, like, at least half properly made deck, it suggests that, la that last of his two cards are indeed Temerian Infantryman. Uh, which would suggest that we should pass this turn because he won't be able to surpass us anyway. And uh, if you remember, we are gaining six points per turn right now with this nifty setup, which is which is borderline ridiculous. So, yep. Even if he plays a card, he's screwed. He won't play a card. Okay, so this is of course less than ideal. Mm. I mean, out of those two, this is of course better, but uh, on an off chance that I will uh, draw Sheila the Tanseville, I'm going to 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 to, to get her Commander's Horn because Sheila wouldn't work with uh, Silver uh, here. Well, no Sheila. Uh, yeah, I guess let's do it. Uh, properly with one more. So once again, this is basically to get card advantage. Uh, it's not always uh, wise to 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 pass like that, but uh, you, depending on what your enemy's deck is in like in real game, uh, you. Uh, you sometimes want to, uh, or very often actually, want to pull as many cards as you need from them because in uh, what is important in this second, if you won the first round, then they cannot pass. So you can cycle through your cards. Uh, for example, if you have a ways of boosting cards on your hand with your own cards or drawing more cards or uh, boosting cards in your graveyard that you aim to, to resurrect next turn and so on and so forth or uh, putting resilient cards on that would uh, stay to the next round all the all those things uh, you can do and your enemy is well nine out of in nine out of ten situations they cannot pass even if you have uh, you are nowhere near the the strength uh, their power strength because uh, well, uh, they can be sure that you won't uh, surpass them with the rest of your cards and uh, and uh, simply win 2-0. Now, uh, what do we want to redraw? Mm. Oh, actually, we want to... Re uh, yes, we want to redraw this. Oh. Alright, so we will start by... Ah, well, let's just kill it. Awaiting your orders. Come to Papi. Yeah, so it seems like two of those are uh, two of those are there. Uh, what we are going to do is get Flipper. You do not deserve to live. That's, was of course not not the perfect solution to that issue, but well, here we are. And well, he would play those two, buff them with the Bolt Potion, all the jazz. It's it's a fairly a fairly nice deck, as you can see. It's uh, it can hold its own, and if enemy doesn't throw uh, enough uh, in terms of removal at you, you can uh, have a very nifty situation in which you simply passively grow by. Uh, about as much as you would by by playing cards, which yeah can be very deadly. And uh, unlike uh, quite a few decks uh, that are uh, 
but based on uh, combos, those little combos of yours are that, are little. So you you put two free cards and they work, work perfectly together. They, uh, they they become a massive issue. So for, you, you put those two, two trebuchets and plant a, a knight leg between them, well, that's four four power per turn and that's in 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 free cards on top of you of what you played so uh yeah it's uh, it's it's a powerful little deck and uh, now let's talk about how to uh, how we could improve it of course uh you would definitely want uh i would definitely go for the third reinforced tribution which actually works pretty damn well in here i would say uh with all that uh so Knight Elect and Trebuchets, probably the, the, the most powerful, although this is, as you can see, by white square on the bottom right of the card, this is common, so you will surely get one after after a few kegs. Uh, same goes with Redanian Knight Elect, so that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, Redanian Elite are also probably worth uh, putting uh, the third one in, uh, in this case, because, uh, well, they they present an issue. Uh, some uh, they 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 present a locking target, and if an enemy doesn't lock them, you can uh, take advantage of it. So because well, those two are also lock targets, of course, like uh, Trebuchets and Knight Elect. So might as well uh, put a put a few more uh, for them. So well, some of them won't get locked because some of them will. Uh, Having cleaver is probably a decent, uh, decent uh, thing. There is a margarita card uh, that is uh, specific for northern realms for locking. That would also uh, make sense because well, locking will be a pain in the ass. Locked uh, Redanian knight is well an issue, uh, so you, you definitely want to, to use that to, to 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 unlock him. As for uh, Faultless, I would probably stick to Faultless actually in, in this kind of deck because uh, the the numbers are right. Uh, uh, if if you played Faultless and, and uh, he gets up to uh, six and two, which is eight, which is impossible to remove with Alza standard, and that's that's important because at least in close uh, close beta, Alza standard was the most uh, popular uh, removal. So uh, not sure if. It's still going to be, but uh, definitely an option uh, to, to think about. And uh, as for things like decoy, I would, I would leave them for now, because, for example, if uh, Redanian uh, Knight Elect catches uh, an Alzar Standard, you can just uh, bounce him with a decoy and, uh, well, he's good as new. And I would probably uh, ignore Tenderbolt Potions, though, and uh, put in... Uh, that's a bronze card, isn't it? And would put in those little things, uh, immune boosts, uh, boost three adjacent units uh, by three and add three armor to them. So, in this kind of deck, if if you use Dun Banner, Heavy Color Man, I would I would keep those two. Uh, so I would probably what I would do is remove those those two guys because they are kind of pointless. Uh, remove that and a boost. At least one. Mm. Leave that done banner. What else? What else? What else? Uh. Uh, there you have it. Something like that. Uh, one more thing to axe. Uh, I would leave two scouts, I'd say. Um. I mean, I like having an Alza standard, to be honest, but the uh, thing is that we have already enough removal in uh, our other cards uh, right here, so I... But, but then again, we... Uh, if you don't have anything to, to replace Sheila with, uh, well, it's, uh, I would probably keep it. Mm. Maybe remove one of the Redanian Knights, uh, Redanian Elite, uh, to, to, to get it to 50 months. Okay, let's, let's do that. Do we have any, any useful servers here? Uh, nothing to write home about, although, uh, if you keep the, uh, keep that, uh, having Iris, uh, with all the removal that you have with, uh, Philippa and Triss Marigold, uh, it's not the worst thing ever, but remember that, uh, there is a lot of swallow potions and such, uh, 
uh, running around. So having uh, so what she, what Iris does, you basically uh, drop them, uh, drop her on the enemy side of the board, and when she dies, all your all of your units are boosted by three. Actually, it's okay. Kind of thing, but uh, for gods, I don't think I have any gods for this one. Well, I have Dijkstra. Uh, could be nice. So you deploy him as a spy. So add uh, four uh, gold to uh, to an enemy side of the board, but you are able to play t uh, two cards from the top of your deck. And I mean, you've seen how this deck snowballs, so it's I I would have to test it. Uh, Shani, always a great, uh, great gold as well for Northern, Northern Realms. Uh, Verdon, uh, is decent. Uh, well, I think he may be better than, than Triss Marigold, but, uh, well, not in every situation, basically. Well, you would have to, 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 to uh, you will have to wait and see. But th th those three are, are, are very solid Northern Realms, uh, cards. Let's, uh, See, because I only opened like 60k, so I have, uh, I still need to open like 240. Um, but I wanted to have uh, all those out of the way. So let's just uh, go and um, look at our goals here. What would you uh, go for? Well, definitely, as I just said, Shani. Uh, the Bloody Baron, definitely not. Uh, we are not killing uh, things. Priscilla. Uh, she's she's untested. I I don't know. She's she's been completely redesigned, so it's, it's difficult to tell. Uh, Dandelion, uh, once again, difficult to tell. Kira Metz, uh Quen Sign would be a good option for your uh, Redanian Knight Elect. Uh, Redanian was it? Yeah, Knight, knight Elect. The, the guys that boosts people around them if they have armor and well this is uh, it's more difficult to remove armor if first of your damage instances goes into a quen sign so uh, actually adding quen to your deck wouldn't be a terrible idea either in, the, in that in that situation and well if, if you happen to have pyramids it's it's a decent uh, way to go about it and john natalis is more of a machine kind of guy uh, as for silvers uh, not much to write home about. I mean, Death Mold is, is, is very nice. Probably it's, I would say he's definitely better than the Shila de Tanceville, uh, with, with the options he provides. Uh, and with how little you, you kind of, you want to, uh, do that. Uh, so, Margarita, uh, well, in this case, this is an offensive locking unit that uh, Northern Realms have, so, uh, I think having Cleaver is, is, a, is a better option because you you are not in a business of locking uh, of resetting your own boosted uh, buffed units. Odin moving to random rounds and boosting you uh, it can be useful, but it's probably nothing too nothing too fancy. Uh, Pavetta is a bit weird these days, so I don't know untested. Um, definitely vest not for this deck. Uh, same for uh, Trollololo, uh, same Neneke, and Taler is, uh, would be always a, a nice choice uh, of a spy, uh, since you have a, once you get going, you have a pretty nice tempo, so uh, uh, adding a spy uh, of 11 onto the opposite side of the board would, would be uh, definitely something uh, you, you could even pull off in the turn you, uh, you aim to win. So, yeah, that would be it as far as uh, the it's, it's a solid deck as it is, and if you happen to run into uh, all those uh, interesting, uh, in, your, in your cakes, I mean, in uh, into all those uh, nice normal realm cards, such as, well, mostly Shani, then, well, you are in you are in luck and this this can turn into a very powerful deck. And even if you haven't, uh, just adding a few of those commons the way I, I showed you would, will make it a very formidable opponent even, uh, uh, well, even in route to, 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 to some extent, I would say. So go for it if you like the Northern Realms. And well, uh, we've done uh, three factions to the go, so uh, they should be up very shortly. I will see you then.